whores. They're whores. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't, why? <laughs> They're not gonna break up. I need one of them to die. They just wanna see the sun. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Hello friends and book babes. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're finally reading Heroes of Olympus. We got the vlog shirt on. If you know, you know. And I'm ready to finally dig in to Heroes of Olympus, okay? I don't know what happened after my little vacay back in June, literally the first week of June, cause it was for my birthday, okay? Ever since then, I haven't vlogged a single thing. So I apologize for that, it was the beginning of June. It is now the end of July. <laughs> I'm so sorry for abandoning you. I'm so sorry. I had a lot of new subscribers recently and I think it all has to do with my Percy Jackson vlog that I posted I think back in May. So welcome to the channel and I know so many of you guys have been commenting on that video to please continue the Rick Rorden universe and everything. So we are finally starting Heroes of Olympus. This one I do not own so we're gonna be on kindle for this and this is also gonna be a continuation of my series of reading popular books from my childhood for the first time because i'm pretty sure this series is also pretty popular even though to be honest i only ever heard things of percy jackson not really heroes of olympus but i'm pretty sure percy jackson is in this one so maybe it's just like a if you know you know if you don't you don't <laughs> type of thing i don't know but truly, this is a first read for me. And there's gonna be a bunch of spoilers. I'm sorry if you've never read it before, but just be prepared for that. But I'm very excited. I have no idea what to expect of it. I don't know if Percy is gonna be the main character, if he's gonna just be on the sidelines. I don't know anything. But I'm really excited to dive into this series and have y'all tag along with me. The only thing I do know is well, I saw, like, a fan art of Percy, like, jumping for Annabeth in the underworld, I think. And I think Percy probably has, like, a half-sister, which, are we surprised, first of all? It's Poseidon, okay? He, half of the population is probably Percy's half-sibling. <laughs> like, let's be so serious right now. I just got to chapter three. Oh my god. The second they mentioned a blonde girl and not Percy next to her, I was like, Percy's missing. Something's going on. Percy isn't here. Where's Percy? Okay, I got to chapter five, which is page 66, at least on my Kindle. I don't know how it correlates on a physical copy, but I am still enjoying it. Shocker. But I do have a theory. I think this was a spoiler I got from an interview that the cast of Percy Jackson were doing. They were like playing a game and so Walker mentioned that Percy has a half-sister. Yeah, that's what happened. So, that's how I got that spoiler. And so, my theory right now is that Piper may be that person. That's what I'm starting to think, just because Annabeth said, yeah, there's no other gods of, or there's no other demigods of the big three that we know of. And so that made me think, like, hmm, I wonder if Piper is one. Then it just, I just was reminded of the thing that I saw in a TikTok comment, so I don't really know, I don't really know the context of this or really anything, but something else that was, like, somewhat spoiled for me is... Percy possibly having amnesia, maybe? Unless they were talking about Jason. Because it looks like Jason currently is the one with amnesia. So either they were talking about Jason and I misread or misunderstood. Or whenever they find Percy, wherever he's at, he's going to have amnesia as well as Jason. Which that will be interesting. That will piss me off for sure just because of Persebeth, but I, I, I'm down, I'm down to read about it. <laughs> Chapter five is starting with Leo. I didn't think I would hear anything about Leo, to be honest. I thought they were gonna give him the Grover treatment. 
Okay guys, I've read maybe another 50 pages today already. It may be a week after the last clip you just saw. <laughs> I just don't like to read in July. I don't know. <laughs> I thought I was over it since I read two books this month already, but I don't know. I'm just not in the mood. I'm not in the mood to do anything. Like I just want to re-watch things. I don't even want to watch a new show. I just want to watch like old YouTube stuff and feel nostalgic. I'm intrigued again with the story. What do you mean, Kyron? about Jason should be dead. Like what? <laughs> Leo, or if that's even his name, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> the third, the, the other guy, the other main guy. I wasn't prepared for him to have such a, such a background, such a story already. Um, <laughs> so it's almost been a week since that last clip yet again but but this time this time like I have a better excuse okay right after that clip I got severely sick <laughs> I don't know what happened I think it was a head cold and so it wasn't severely sick you could probably tell from my voice that it's still we still dealing with mucus and stuff going on but I don't know about y'all I don't know if y'all are the type where when you get sick you just lay in bed and read more but I'm the type where I lay in bed and watch TV so I wasn't trying to use my brain I I was sick enough to call into work I never do that okay so just take that as a good excuse okay but I did get to chapter 10 when I did go back to work and suffered through some of the other sicknesses so I'm on chapter 10 <laughs> it's taken what like two three weeks for me to get to chapter 10 Jesus Christ I need to get to it. At first, with Jason not having his memories and stuff, I was just like, oh, he's a confused little boy. <laughs> but my friend made the point of, like, with Percy Jackson, Rick put in so much personality in Percy within the first, like, three sentences. You know, Percy was talking to us, the reader, directly, you know, and he would always have these random thoughts that were so funny and all these things. While with Jason, granted, he doesn't have his memories or anything. There's, like, no personality to Jason. There's not really a personality to Piper either yet. And I know I'm, like, 10... I think I'm 20% in at this point. So I feel like we should have seen that by now, especially after reading something like Percy Jackson, where everyone had these big personalities. So I think that might have something to do with why... I'm just not reading it as much or not wanting to read it as much. I'm definitely not hating it, but I think this is just going to be a slower paced series for me. Meanwhile, Percy Jackson, I probably finished the entire series. I finished it, I think, in two months, but that was mainly because I was reading it with friends and had to wait. If I didn't have to do that, I probably would have read it all in like one month. <laughs> Meanwhile... This first book has already taken like half the month, so, and I haven't even finished it, you know, I'm not even halfway. I'm currently at Piper's, um, right now, but found out her, her dad is the human, so my little theory of her being Percy's half-sister is incorrect. I'm very interested in the actual plot, but the characters that we're introduced to right now not so much. And I think that's the real issue. Also, you could tell it's almost been a week because I have my hair straight. <laughs> These vlogs, whenever the vlogs are uh, more than like two weeks, you best believe there's going to be a hair change <laughs> eventually. <laughs> um, first, don't ask me how long it's been since the last clip you saw. Frankly, at this point, it's none of your business. <laughs> I'm finally officially on chapter 10. <laughs> That last clip, I think I said I was on chapter 10. No, I forgot. I was still in the middle of chapter 9. But anyways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because I just got the camera to say that I did get... I'm starting, I'm starting to randomly get, like, TikToks of, like, Percy Jackson things. And so, book Percy Jackson stuff. And so, sometimes, that means I will get a Heroes of Olympus random TikTok too. And so because of that, I now know that Jason is 
a kid of the big three. <laughs> are we that surprised? No. These gods are whores. They're whores. Did you know that? You should. You haven't been paying attention, if not. But because I now know that he's a part of the big three, I'm going to assume he is Zeus's kid just because of the, like, flying stuff. And Zeus is, like, the god of the sky and the lightning or something. I don't he's the sky daddy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Now, um, if I had just gotten off my ass and read one more chapter earlier before seeing that TikTok, I would have gotten the reveal that Jason is indeed Zeus's son. But another reason I was like, oh, for the big three, he's probably Zeus's kid was because Hera was the one that took his memory and Hera is Zeus's wife, and all these little gods. All these stupid gods, they always be beefing with the child and say they're mans. Guys, okay, it's been a couple days since the last clip you saw, but I have been reading, even though I haven't been filming it as much. I am a Leo girl currently. He's the only one that feels like he has personality to me, and I don't know if in my brain a personality means that you're funny because <laughs> i feel like piper has a personality maybe but i feel like her personality is literally just liking jason and hoping he likes her back <laughs> like i feel like that's her whole personality and so i'm not really into it she's giving pick me just a bit and I know this was like 2010 so like that was definitely the trend then but yeah she's kind of written in a pick me way where she's like Ugh, makeup ew Ugh, my hair's done ew <laughs> like literally having a freaking crisis over her hair being done you know <laughs> and it's just like girl it is not that serious okay calm down <laughs> like I understand her qualm with people liking her because she's pretty <laughs> like let's chill out a bit okay so yeah she's kind of giving pick me energy and then jason he's just confused <laughs> he's just so confused he doesn't know what's going on leo his trauma is crazy it go crazy i'm so sad for him i'm so sad for him that's probably why he, he's my favorite because he has the most trauma so far that we know of because we literally know nothing of Jason. <laughs> I just had the random connection. I don't know if anyone else will agree with me on this. But Leo is giving Styles from Teen Wolf vibes for me. Which is probably why I like him the most so far. Homeboy really just defeated three Cyclopses. Cy Cyclopses? Cyclops. Cy cyclop cyclop by cyclopses he defeated three cyclopses single-handedly and i don't know about you but that sounds like something style stalinsky would do okay because yeah leo has powers unlike styles but leo basically defeated them with his brain and that is something styles does me only knowing about midas because of taylor swift <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing it's kind of slay at the same time though the midas touch on the chevy door november flush and you flannel no cure ah! okay talia just entered the chat talia just entered the chat bro Ever since they actually got on the quest, I've been enjoying this a lot more. That's truly what I was waiting for. We went from, with Percy Jackson, we went from 12-year-olds needing to fight the gods to now we have them literally fighting the earth. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, I, still don't, I still don't ship Piper and Jason. Um, she had a dream where they kissed. And you, did, you didn't know it was a dream at first. And so I was very, I wasn't, I wasn't happy about it. I was very indifferent about it. But when I found out it was a dream, I was like, thank God. So I still don't like them together. I like the trope of like girl falls first, 
boy falls harder. In this instance, I don't know. It's just written in a way where I don't like it. It's written in, a, in kind of like a pick me way. So I don't really like it. <laughs> I honestly, with the plot and everything, I keep forgetting that Percy being missing is a plot. <laughs> Which is crazy because it's Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson is everything, you know? But sometimes they'll just mention him and, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's another issue we have in this universe going on right now. Oops. Yeah, we should, we should work on that. I have like 20 pages left and all I'm gonna say is if the cliffhanger isn't someone found Percy, I'm gonna be even more annoyed that they even had Percy missing in the first place. So I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting to see if he has amnesia as well. I still don't like Piper and Jason as a couple. And then her marking her territory or whatever with Drew. Like, he's mine. Don't do... Like, that just gave me the ick. <laughs> if Jason... If the roles were reversed and Jason did that, it would have given me the ick then, too. Like, I don't like... I don't like that plot. I don't like when characters do that. Also, I want to see Nico. <laughs> if we're gonna... If we're gonna have little nods to Percy and Annabeth and all that stuff, I want to see Nico. Give me Nico. I want a Nico cameo. The scream I just scrumped. I wish I was recording. The last line. The last line. You know what? I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you right now. I'll read it to you right now. Because what? The, the why didn't why didn't I figure that out? Why didn't I think of that? What the? <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Annabeth. Annabeth. Okay. Disappeared around the same time Jason appeared. If Jason came to Camp Half-Blood, exactly, Jason agreed. Percy Jackson is at the other camp, and he probably doesn't even remember who he is. And that's how they end the first book. What the f- <laughs> I, I already had the amnesia thing spoiled for me, but here I am, freaking out, losing my goddamn mind, still. Focus, please. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't, why? <laughs> why didn't I think that what was happening to Jason is what's happening to Percy currently, but in the Roman camp? And they're gonna sail to Greece? This battle isn't gonna be in Manhattan? <laughs> like the other one? They're gonna go to Greece? Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't even care that the amnesia thing was spoiled for me because I'm still shook. I'm still shook. Because I didn't see that coming. I didn't know why. I didn't know what happened. Well, I have no idea what to rate it. At first I was thinking three stars when I wasn't that into it. And then I started getting into it and I was like, ooh, maybe four stars. And then I was like, okay, that's a little bit dramatic. Maybe like 3.75 or something. But with that ending, now I'm like, I don't know. I don't know at all. Just know right now I'm leaning towards like a... 3.5 to a 4 um, and I'll probably make my final decision when I finish this whole series <laughs> most likely. So now we're gonna start book two, Son of Neptune. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so excited now and I'm so happy that I'm excited now <laughs> because before I was not that excited. That's cute, the dedication to Becky who shares my sanctuary in New Rome. Even Hera could never make me forget you. Is it gonna be in Percy's point of view? <gasps> you will see that. Did you see that? Is this Percy? Is this Percy? Is this Percy? Okay, I know I I know I look like I'm being very dramatic right now, but I dead ass did not think. Percy's POV would be in this series, like at all. Oh my god. What the hell? Who's the son of Neptune, though? <laughs> Is that who's gonna be a part of this little prophecy? I assume. Maybe. I don't know. The only thing he remembers is Annabeth. 
He doesn't like really remember. Mu- he just know. He just remembers her, but he doesn't like remember exactly why she matters or anything like that. But oh my god. Um. So remember when I said I don't know who the son of Neptune is. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all must think I'm stupid, and you'd be right. I just realized Neptune is the Roman name for Poseidon. So, the son of Neptune is indeed Sir Percy Jackson. My prayers have been answered. Nico has arrived. But also, why the hell is Nico here? What? What is going on? We're in Hazel's POV now. And she said brother, so I don't know why <clears throat> the prospect of Nico specifically having more half-siblings was shocking to me. Like, obviously, Percy and Jason and, like, pretty much every other uh, god out there, I wasn't surprised on because they're all whores. But Hades, I don't know why, even though he's literally supposed to basically be the devil. <laughs> in Greek mythology. For some reason, I just I just wasn't thinking Hades would be about that life, too. For some reason. I don't know. Frankly, all of these gods are the villain. I think we should just dismantle them all completely. Let, let, let Mother Nature just freaking do what she gotta do. Just like Gaia or however you say it. Just let her do what she gotta do. One thing Percy is gonna do, amnesia or not, is win Capture the Flag. Okay, he will win it. <laughs> it doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter what's going on. He's going to win it. Okay. Also, Frank and his backstory. Um, what's going on? Why do all these children have so much trauma? Percy mouthing off to Mars is funny. <laughs> his hatred for Aries transcends any and everything, and I just love it. I just love it. Why do I low key like? the Mars version of Aries more than the Aries. Because <laughs> I remember in Percy's books, towards the end, the way he treats, like, uh, Clarissa, or whatever her name was, and all his other kids was kind of not it. But he seemed nice to Frank, which is nice. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. Time will tell. Are you really telling me right now that Hazel did what she did at 13? She's everything to me. She's everything to me. And if she's the one that ends up dying, I'm going to be so pissed. <laughs> we got to find a loophole. We got to find a loophole. Piper can go. Take Piper. <laughs> you can have Piper. Hazel, however, must stay. I literally have like eight chapters left. I don't know when is the last time I said anything because I've just been immersed in the story, okay? Frank is that guy. He's related to per Percy somehow. Um, Hazel better not die. Frank better not die. I care so much more about the people in this book possibly dying than I did in Lost Hero. Obviously, I care if Leo dies, but if Jason or Piper died, I honestly wouldn't care. <laughs> I'm finishing this book. It's literally, it's one of those things where like, I'm hungry, but I will not move from this spot until I finish this book. We are not eating until I finish this book. <laughs> I wasn't part of the quest, Percy said. Yes, I know. And you're wise to let me explain, since I was. <laughs> I love him. I just finished. Oh my gosh, okay the way the book ended i'm assuming we're just going right into the meeting which i'm very excited about and i'm very nervous about leo possibly being sammy or maybe a descendant of sammy because i really do love hazel and frank see that's the thing i love the relationships in rick in rick's universe Except for Piper and Jason. Like, I'm just not into them. I'm not into them. And so that makes me wonder if it's like a misdirect or if it's just one of those flukes where, like, it's not as good as the other things he's written. Because Hazel and Frank, I've been into since the beginning. The way Percy feels about Ares is the way I feel about Zeus. And honestly, Hera, frankly. But, yeah, I just have always... Zeus has been my least favorite.
forever. Second book, honestly, it was definitely a lot better than the first one, I'd have to say. I think the first one is good. It's just harder to get into. I think I would give Son of Neptune like a solid 4.5 stars. I think I gave The Lost Hero 4 stars mainly because of the ending honestly after like a week of thinking about it i probably would put the lost hero down to a three like it's just a solid three stars that ending was just crazy <laughs> also mark of athena very scared for what that means for annabeth very excited very nervous for mark of athena because everyone in my comments for percy jackson has been like oh my gosh she was crying over zoe Mark of Athena's gonna be crazy. <laughs> <gasps> Annabeth finally gets a POV. Thank God. I am so excited. I'm so excited. Um, I will say, <laughs> real quick, since that fan art I mentioned that was low-key a spoiler, and seeing a version of the cover of House of Hades, which is the fourth book, I feel like I know where this is gonna end. <laughs> Just context clues and things. It's giving a Hades town. Yeah, so I feel like I know what the fourth book is mainly gonna be about. How it's it's the how did we get here thing that's gonna be the real question, I guess. Like is Annabeth actually gonna die? And Percy's gonna have to like bring her back to life. Is she does she just get trapped over there somehow, some way? He has to save her. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's just a theory. It is a theory because of context clues. I think I'm right. Be the main reason I will be crying in this book. <laughs> I don't know. It's Rick Warden. There could be like five other things that are gonna make me cry and why everyone's warning me about this damn book. I don't know. But either way, I still don't know how this is going to happen. So even if I am correct in my assumptions, I will probably still cry because I don't know how we're going to get there. And hope Annabeth is a warrior of the mind. She totally is. What am I talking about? <laughs> Piper. Piper. You know what? This may be your time to shine in this book, babes. I may start liking you for real, for real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is Octavian is being a little skeptical and all that, being annoying and stuff to Jason, literally the person he should trust the most in this group. People that came from Camp Half Blood. He's like. Uh, that's our most sacred place. If the giants had imprisoned a goddess there, they would have destroyed her, Piper said, and blamed it on the Greeks and started a war between the camps. Now be quiet and let Jason finish. <laughs> Slay. Slay. I still am not happy that Piper and Jason are officially together, I'll be honest. But maybe, maybe I can come around on them with them actually being together. Maybe I'll like them. There's, so, there's a big possibility that it might be two weeks later from the last clip you saw. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm on chapter 10. <laughs> I'm on chapter 10 right now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I got out of the slump, but we, we're not, we're not. And it's probably because I'm not in Percy's head. Quite frankly, I got excited when I was in Annabeth's head, but I I didn't care that much <laughs> after a little bit. So yeah, and now I'm in Piper's head. Okay, so you know what's funny? Other than this is probably like my fourth hairstyle in this video. We're on chapter 25 now, and we have yet to be in Jason's POV. We've been in Annabeth's, Hazel's, Leo, I think possibly Frank. I don't really remember. <laughs> hey, I've been reading these 25 chapters for like three weeks. Okay, don't mind me. And so Jason is quite literally the only one of the prophecy whose POV we haven't had yet. And I'm literally 50% into the book now. So like, what's that about? 
like, I'm not complaining because, like, I don't really care about Jason like that. But also, like, what? What's going on, Rick? What are you doing? G Gay Gaia, however you say, Mother Earth, whatever her name. She has to wake up in the series. I'm just wondering if it's going to be in this book or House of Hades. Currently, the... <laughs> Currently, right now, in this moment, I don't want anyone to die, but I wouldn't be heartbroken <laughs> if Jason or Piper died. Another thing, where the hell is Grover? In the second book, when Percy was like, oh, there's like this satyr that like is looking for me i think <laughs> but like when are we getting a percy and grover reunion that's what i want to know why haven't we seen grover where is he what's he doing i want to see kyron i want to see grover i need more of nico like where <sighs> rick don't piss me off i want more of nico you know he's my favorite he's really my favorite and he his he's on the brink of death it better not happen. It better not happen for him. Okay, number one. Number two, I still want to know so many things. Like, how did he even learn about Hades also being Pluto? How did he, like, how did he know that when he met Hazel, how did he know that Hazel was the daughter of Pluto and not Hades? Like, he guessed correctly. Like, how did, what is, what is going on? I need to know everything about Nico. Everything ever. I need to know. Only other thing I do know is Rick did not even care about writing the process of Jason and Piper getting together, which leads me to believe that he doesn't think that they should be together, which makes me happy. Maybe I'm just gaslighting myself into thinking that they're not going to end up together because I don't want them together. I don't know, but we shall see. Honestly, I don't give one damn about Jason. I don't even, half the time, I don't even remember that he's a character. Frankly, I hate to break it to you. I don't know. I don't care about Jason. <laughs> I'm sure I would if we actually got his POV sometimes, but we don't, so I don't care. All right? It's just, it is what it is. I definitely remember caring about him a lot more in the first book. But, like, not by much. So, I'll be surprised when we finally get in his POV, whenever that will happen. I would enjoy Piper's POV so much more if she would just shut the hell up <laughs> about Jason. I don't care. You guys know, I don't care. I do not care. Rick has not given me the proper tools to care about them. Which makes me feel like one of them's gonna die. And honestly, I want it to happen at this point. <laughs> like, if they're not gonna break up, I need one of them to die. Like, <laughs> and listen, I say that now, and then if it actually happens, I'll probably be devastated and cry my eyes out because I am that ridiculous. I am that annoying. So keep that in mind. <laughs> I think you just like the idea of Jason, not really him necessarily and that's about it i don't know what jason feels about you piper because we're not even in his pov we haven't been in his pov for two whole books this book is where everyone's together so you would think jason's pov would be in here but it's not you would especially think it because we haven't heard from jason for a whole other book before this moment but no taking me like a month to finish this book. Not because it's bad, I just, me and Anna, who's doing my buddy read with me, both agreed that it's, you get wrapped up in the book when you're reading it, but it takes so much to actually start it, to actually pick it up. But once you pick it up, you read in at least 50 pages in one sitting, most likely, you know. Y'all know I love him. Y'all know I love him. I love him. I love him. He's here. He's here. He's here to help. I love him. It's the way that 
Percy and Jason are literally fighting for their lives, and <laughs> and Mr. D's just chilling, just just arms crossed, looking around like, <laughs> oh my god, I love him. <laughs> he really showed up to critique everything that they were doing, <laughs> and then and then it's here like prove that I should help you. Entertain me. Thank you. Let me put you in the actual Coliseum to entertain everyone. <laughs> He's crazy. I do think it's funny how Greek him likes Diet Coke and Roman him likes Diet Pepsi. <laughs> I think that's funny. I finished it. <laughs> what the hell? I, I speculated this would happen. I speculated. And I still wasn't ready. What do you mean? <laughs> they go together. They go together. <laughs> so... I was keeping it together until the last line when Leo said, let's go save our friends. <laughs> what the hell? Percy followed her <laughs> into tar Tartarus, tartar sauce, whatever it's called. He followed her. He followed her, guys. Persebeth is everything. No one's doing it like Persebeth. Also, Nico's back. Love to see it. I love little Nico. I'm sure they're fine, right? There was no death. But, like, also, depending on how you look at it with Persebeth, then there was. But... <laughs> There was no death in this one, technically. No notes. Let's just freaking read House of Hades. Like, I haven't, I don't know what to say. Followed her. <laughs> like, I knew, I knew Percy did that, okay? Just from a fan art, okay? I knew he did that. But to, like, read him doing that, I, I can't. I found a more book accurate one, but also show accurate one. Oh my god. What the hell? <laughs> I can't do this. That's the only fan art I'm gonna see because fan art is usually what spoils things for me. It's time to start House of Hades. Alert the presses, alert the presses, guys. Almost 250 pages in and Jason finally has a POV. <laughs> what the hell? And then tell me why, tell me why the first sentence in his POV is Jason fell asleep on the job. Jason, Jason, please, please, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> maybe him having his own POV in this book, maybe, maybe we'll redeem him. Okay, but so far he's been utterly useless. Let's be for real. <laughs> so far, he's been a pilot. So he's not totally useless. But yeah, that's pretty much the extent of his value so far. And him just saying that he is the son of Zeus. Like, that's it. Or Jupiter, whatever. The, who cares? I don't care. But oh my god, even with his little quest with Leo, he was not helpful. He was not helpful at all. He got beat up instantly. Like, why is Leo... Holding his own better than you. You are the son of Jupiter. What are you doing? <laughs> and then his own little quest with Hazel. Hazel was doing basically all the work. Jason just made sure she didn't fall off a cliff. <laughs> I think the funniest thing is when we are in Jason's POV for the first time since book one. He is immediately just in a vision. So it's literally just moving the plot forward to see what's going on back in America over there and with the camps and stuff. It's literally just for that. It has nothing to do with Jason at all. <laughs> but Rachel and Grover. Grover finally making an appearance. I've been wondering where that boy was. I feel like people are going to think I hate Jason I, because I want him dead. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's a fair assumption. But I don't hate Jason. I just feel like, I feel like Rick hates Jason. 
<laughs> because it's just like he does not have any, any time in this series, really, other than the first book. And so I just find that odd since he's like the main character of the first book. I don't know. It just, it felt like it was supposed to be a Jason and Percy thing. When really it's been like a everyone but Jason <laughs> thing. You know, like at this point I would put him in the same category as Coach. And that's bad. <laughs> Coach doesn't have a POV. He's there. You sometimes remember he's there. Doesn't really bring much to the group, you know, during battles. He's low-key not helpful. <laughs> it's also Jason. He's always just getting knocked out. And it's just like... I don't know. The first time he's been helpful is with Hazel going up that cliff. And that was it. Tavian? You better freaking listen to Reyna, okay? I don't have time for this. I don't have time for your buffoolery. All right, but also, why do I care so much more about Reyna than I do Jason? You know, like, I don't know, nothing makes sense. <laughs> Guys, I already know some of y'all are not gonna believe me, but I had a sinking suspicion that Nico was gay. <laughs> I did, I did. Okay, maybe it wasn't a seeking suspicion, but it was kind of like a, I feel like this would make sense if he was. You know, kind of how I felt about Zoe and Thalia. I felt like that would have been the perfect little enemies to lovers if Rick was willing to go that route. He did not. <laughs> so in this one, I was kind of assuming he wouldn't be about that life or be willing to venture into that realm. I didn't really think about it until people started mentioning their suspicion that Nico had a crush on Annabeth because I was like, that doesn't, I don't know, like something about Nico, it's just giving he's a gay icon. Like, I don't think he has a crush on Annabeth. And then they meet the god or demigod or whatever. I don't know. Don't ask me about something I just read five minutes ago. Okay, don't ask me. <laughs> Whoever they were talking to, he said that he fell in love with a man. And I was like, are we about to do this? Are we going to do this? So that's when I was like, oh my god. Rick is willing to do this, okay, okay. Then Nico has to be gay, yes, he is gay. He's totally gay, he loves Percy. <laughs> he has a crush on Percy, it's not Annabeth, oh my God. And then guess what? He indeed does. Then Percibeth is my life, so it can't happen. But also I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been mad <laughs> if it was Percy and Nico, like, <sighs> But now I just want, you know what? Nico and Jason should just be a thing. Then I'll actually care about Jason. I feel like that could happen. Good morning, sleepyhead. Did you know you talk in your sleep? By the way, who's Penelope? She's my wife. Anyways. <laughs> if you know, you know. Get into it. Get into Epic the Musical, okay? <laughs> but ever since that musical, Calypso's a jump scare anytime I see her. So I have to remember, this is the Percy Jackson universe. This is Rick Rorden's universe. This is his version of the story. So it's a lot less traumatic and dark to the originals. So, yeah. But it's, it's really hard because now anytime I see... Calypso, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> In this one, I just have to remember, she's not a predator. <laughs> I have to remember that. I have to remember that in this one because Rick, Rick, this is for children, okay? Rick's not going to do that. All right. So, yeah, I just have to remember that. And once I remember that, I low-key started to ship Calypso and Leo. I'm not going to lie. You can't give me enemies to lovers and force proximity and not want me 
to root for them. I kind of want it now. <laughs> I kind of want it. He swore on the river. He swore it on the river, guys. That he was going to come back for her. And I have to. I simply have to ship it. I have to ship it. What do you mean? They're meant to be. <laughs> how am I supposed to move on? How am I supposed to move on? I just want. I want to know how long Leo's been gone. Actually, because you know how time works on that stupid island. How long has Leo been gone? Bow down to the immortal Calypso here to ease your head. <laughs> Whatever. Stream love in paradise. And then cry towards the end of the song. Okay. I was literally thinking there hasn't been any deaths going on. What's going on? Like, who's gonna die? Is anyone gonna die in this series? What's going on? We're towards the end of book four and no one's died. What's the tea? And then Bob. <laughs> and the giant, Dam Damascus, I think, I don't know. When I see his name, all I think of is Damascus Road, but uh, <laughs> the road to Damascus. Um, that's all I think of, so I'm just gonna call him that. <laughs> Bob said to say hello to the stars for that. <laughs> That got me. That really got me. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I didn't even remember who Bob was, to be honest. <laughs> it took a lot for me to remember. <laughs> they better be okay. This better be a misdirect, actually. Because <laughs> that was so sad. <laughs> Tell the stars hello for what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> That's all the, the That's all Bob and Damascus wanted. That's all they wanted was to see the store. He said He said until then my friends tell the sun and the stars hello for me. <laughs> this is not okay. I'm not okay. Damas Damascus is that how you say the giant's name? Damascus? I like Damascus better. <laughs> they just want to see the sun. I'm a mess. Guys, I'm on my period also, by the way. So this doesn't help. <laughs> this has been an emotional cycle, guys. Anytime I see anything, like, even a little sad, I just start bursting into tears. And that's usually not me. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> want to see the sun please please rick let them see the sun that's all i ask even if you kill them off after like i just want them to see the sun like they want i'm gonna stop because if i keep thinking about it i'm gonna have to literally just go to sleep, go to bed and cry my eyes out <laughs> so i'm gonna keep reading but i have to i have to talk about that um, <sighs> also, since, since you're here, I haven't mentioned the, like, now us knowing that Frank is dealing with a Aries and Mars, like, fighting in his head. Him literally, like, having schizophrenia right now. <laughs> I was also thinking about the fact that I love Nico so much. I love him so much. I love him probably just as much as Percy, right? But he doesn't have a POV, you know? And this entire vlog so far has been me complaining about me not caring about Jason because there's, like, never really a POV of him. So I was like, what is, what's up with that? Because Nico doesn't have one either, and I love him, so what's the tea? And I think it's because Rick gave a lot more um backstory and like lore 
behind Nico while Jason's entire personality is just being a son of Jupiter. And that's it. You know, like, like really, what is there else <laughs> about Jason other than that he is the son of Jupiter and is in a relationship with Piper? Like, what else? And he can fly. Like, other than that, he's always knocked out. Like, he's always getting knocked out. <laughs> and, like, is not really helping the situation hardly ever. You know, he's not really benefiting or pushing the story forward. Except for, possibly, what the prophecy means that Piper was saying. That either Leo or Jason might die. If it's Leo, I'm going to be pissed. Because I, I need him to go back to... Calypso. That's it. <laughs> and yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. But I think that's what it is. Is Rick just hasn't given a reason to necessarily care about Jason. I don't hate him. He's just he's just there. Like he's just one of those characters that's like, okay, he's here. He's apparently a main character, but like is he really? I don't I don't think so. I don't know how other people feel about Jason. I don't know if people feel the way I do, if or if they hate him or if they really love him and I'm in the minority. Like I don't know how other people feel about him. But I'm just very indifferent with him. I kind of feel like he's a wasted character currently still. We still have one more book. And if the prophecy is correct and he needs to die, then maybe my mind will be changed by the next book. But, yeah. <sighs> now that I've calmed down about the stars, I'm going to keep reading. Because I'm literally about to cry again just mentioning stars, okay? <laughs> this period is not, is not, is not doing great for my heart, okay? <laughs> so I can't. Okay, I just finished House of Hades, and they did not need to do that to Renee's Pegasus. Damn it. That was just so rude. But anyways, other than that, <laughs> I'd give that one a solid, like, 4.5 stars. That one was really good, I have to say. I really enjoyed it. I have I think that one is the fastest one I've read so far. I did most of it was mainly because Libby was gonna take it away pretty soon. But I didn't feel like I was struggling with like making myself read it faster or anything. And I just had a fun time while reading it. Well, it wasn't that fun because, you know, it was a bit emotional, a bit emotional. But I really did enjoy it. So now we're finally on the last book guys I have been reading this series since I think the beginning of August like I think the last week of July I think I've been reading this in this series and it is now October 13th it is October 13th which that's kind of like a normal pace maybe a little fast for some people for me though I thought I was going to finish this entire series in August. Meanwhile, I finished the first book in all of August. <laughs> also, I'm not surprised that Jason is actually the first POV of the fifth book. Because I felt like if he does end up dying, <laughs> it would make sense to start having him his POV in this one a little bit more and also it's kind of full circle because the first book started with his POV and the last book is starting with his POV again you know that's kind of full circle if the POV thing isn't because he's dying or anything I think that is was still a good choice and kind of nice I am not really expecting Percy to be his POV to be in this one that much just because I feel like I hear a lot of people complain about that that Percy's POV isn't really in it in the last book which to be completely honest with you I'm kind of okay with I don't know if it's because everyone like that's the thing I've heard so I'm kind of just like expecting it but I don't know I just feel like 
I love Percy's POV, but I also love all the other characters' POVs as well. Like, Jason's is really the only one I make fun of. Like, his POV isn't necessarily bad. I just thought it was funny that in the last book, it wasn't really about him, even though it was in his perspective. Not in it at all, I'll be very shocked, because, like, this is the last book. So, he should at least have, like, a couple chapters. But... I mean, Jason's also one of the main characters, and he hasn't really had that many in really any of the other books. So, I don't know. Since I'm expecting Percy to not be in it as much, I'm kind of just like, that's whatever. I don't really care. As long as it's not just Jason and just Piper, <laughs> I'll be okay. If, if it's just them two, then we're going to have a problem. <laughs> so, I've been reading on my phone, because... I don't know. I just feel like I read faster on my phone for some reason. I honestly forgot about Jason's trauma. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> when he started, when his mom showed up, his the ghost of his mom or whatever, I was like, oh yeah, he has one of those. Oh yeah, she died. Oh yeah, she left him when he was like two. <laughs> like, his, the trauma he has is crazy and it's not talked about enough which is why I forgot about it it genuinely is not talked about enough <sighs> I completely forgot I'm sorry Jason I'm sorry the scream I had to hold inside of me because I was reading at work when Renee when Renee popped up as a POV I'm pretty sure in book two or three, I was wondering if Renee would have a POV because I felt like I would like that. And now she, now she has one. I mean, it makes sense because she like is on her own little thing with Nico and Coach. So we kind of got to know what's going on, but we also don't necessarily have to. But I'm excited to what I have preferred if it was Nico's POV. Yes, but I will take Renee any day. I love her. Hopefully we still do get Nico. That would be nice. I just want, I just, I want Nico's POV just one time. Please, please, Rick, please. They talking about Odysseus a lot so far, which makes sense because he's like, he's kind of a big deal. <laughs> he's kind of a big deal in Greek mythology, okay? But I didn't read the Odyssey growing up. And I'm just getting into, like, his stuff with Epic the Musical and stuff. So, like, learning more of that stuff with the Greek mythology. I'm, I'm just like, damn. Okay, spoilers. <laughs> As if it's not literally the Odyssey. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I got spoiled for the last two sagas. Because they're not out yet. Stream Epic the Musical if you haven't, guys. It's slay. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Do you see this? Do you see this? It says Nico. Nico. <laughs> My prayers have been answered. Rick. <sighs> I love you, Rick. I love you, bitch. Oh my God. I ain't gonna never stop loving you, bitch. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But we're now in chapter 13. And I was thinking, I was like, you know, so far, this is like the last book of the series. And it's not really giving the way the last book of Percy Jackson's series was giving. Like, I was already crying by like chapter 3 or 5 or something. And we're on chapter 13 and I'm still just like, okay, whatever. What are we doing now? Okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm excited about the POVs I'm seeing, like Renee and now Nico. <laughs> um, but other than that, like the plot and everything, I'm just like, okay, we're still like on a journey to something, <laughs> to stop someone, you know? <sighs> it's just, it's not hitting the same plot-wise. Character-wise, however, I'm really enjoying it. And now Nico, now I get to see Nico, and I feel like Nico will just make me, like, 
spontaneously combust at this point, to be honest. I don't know. A love-hate relationship with Piper. Because I kind of hate when I see her name pop up and I'm like, damn it, I'm in her POV again. Damn it. <laughs> but then she every time I'm in her POV, something happens where I'm like, OK, T, she's that girl, you know, but every single time it doesn't change. Like every single time I'm still like, damn it, I'm in her POV. Oh, slay, girl, you keep you keep on going. But I don't know. I just don't like being in her POV. But I do like the things that she does. I like her. I just don't want to hear about Jason all the freaking time, you know? And I feel like that's because we didn't actually watch them get together. Because if, like, Percy or Annabeth in their POVs, if they talk about the other and, like, all they did was talk about the other one, I think I'd be, like, giggling and kicking my feet. Because I'm like, oh, my God, they love each other so much. And I think it's because I saw them the trajectory you know i saw the journey of their love story i didn't see the journey of jason and piper so i just i don't care i would care so much about both of you as individuals if y'all would just shut up about each other <laughs> renee is that girl i love renee so much she learns that her sister lured her to puerto rico as like bait she's like the bait for a trap that they're doing for the giant and all the huntress kind of look at Renee when she finds that out like what's up and she just goes like don't get a guilty conscience now that's a good plan anyways what's going on <laughs> and I just love her for that you know I love her for that she sees when a plan is a good plan and doesn't wallow on hurt feelings about it you know and I just love that I love that about her and her starting to be really protective of Nico. I love it because he needs somebody. He's so alone and I just hate it so much. And even when he has Hazel, he doesn't really because then they always have to be separate in these plots. <laughs> and it's like, I need him to have a friend. Like Hazel is his sister. So he has her for sure. You know, they're locked in. But I need him to have like, friends i need him to have some besties that's what i need and i'm glad renee is starting to have that also i don't know if it's because renee's around the huntress and the huntress give sapphic vibes to me but now i'm starting to think actually even before this i was like renee kind of gives sapphic vibes to me since like the moment I met her, <laughs> to be honest. But then she kind of liked Jason, and then she kind of liked Percy. So I was like, okay, well, she could still be sapphic, but I don't know. I don't think Rick's going to go that way. I think Rick, the most Rick is going to do is have Nico be gay. Like, that's the most he's doing. <laughs> he's not about to He's not about to have some women love women moment, I don't think. But if he did... I'd be like, I told you. <laughs> I hate how easily absentee fathers are forgiven. However, I might make an exception for Hades. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Something about Hades in this universe, bro. I'm just like, he's the best of the the big three, to be honest. He like he really is. And I hate that. It's him and Aries slash Mars, whatever. Why are they like the only, those are like the only fathers that have appeared and like really spoken to their kids in like some type of encouraging way. Where's Poseidon, you know? Like, did I like Poseidon in Percy's books? No. I don't think. <laughs> I don't remember anything, okay? But the moments when he showed up, it was kind of like a big deal, you know? And I'm kind of like, where the hell is Poseidon, Neptune, whatever? Where is Jupiter slash Zeus? When's that combo between him and Jason gonna happen? Like with every other kid. Every other kid gets at least one combo with their um, god or goddess parent. <laughs> so like where is that for Jason that's like kind of making me sad for Jason like he's truly just 
like he's 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 considered a leader but like he's like the most forgotten leader <laughs> to ever exist and it's like what is going on <laughs> there's a lot of talk about people possibly dying like piper thinks she might have to die hazel thinks she might have to die nico thinks he might have to die <laughs> jason thinks he might have to die like everyone everyone at this moment is basically speculating that they're gonna be the one that dies and i feel like it's gonna be jason but also I feel like Jason is like the obvious choice at this point. And so I don't know what's going to happen. However, I do feel like Percy Jackson's series is doing a better job because there was more deaths and more of me crying. So far, I've only cried about Bob. <laughs> Still not okay. Still not okay about Bob and D Damascus or however you said his, say his name. He watched my Akatar vlogs. Then you know, my main complaint with Aqua War was there wasn't enough deaths. I am team give me death. <laughs> give me death. That just makes a good, better story, okay? And there hasn't been nearly enough. Renee's Pegasus, which that was just uncalled for. I, when I say death, I never, I never mean an animal, okay? First of all, I never mean a pet. I never mean an animal. Don't ever, <laughs> don't ever think that I mean that because I don't, I never will. But where's all the people death? Like I'm waiting for a person to die. And it doesn't even have to be like the main seven, like the ways, like how Zoe died, that like, ah, that was so much for me. Like even if they're just random side people that die, it's okay. <laughs> As long as you make me feel something towards them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, oh my god, I can't believe they're gone, you know? You know? <laughs> Literally the next chapter, the next chapter, after saying what I said, Phoebe, the Huntresses, the Amazonians, dead. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's not funny, actually. It's really quite serious. Um, <laughs> but what? <laughs> Even though this is what I wanted, I'm not having any strong feelings about it, to be honest. Because I don't know Phoebe like that. <laughs> Maybe I did in Percy Jackson and I don't remember. But yeah, I don't. It's sad, but I, it's not a death that's going to invoke strong emotions to me. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I just don't have any strong feelings about it. There was death, which I guess I got what I wanted. The way I want to cry over Nico and Renee. <laughs> They are so sibling coded and I just love them so much. They're so found family right now. Nico, Renee, and Coach, they are so found family right now. And that is all I wanted for Nico. Focus, please, please. This is not the time. This is not the time, okay? That's all I wanted for little Nico is to have his found family. <laughs> and, and. Oh my god, the backstory of Renee, like, while she was telling the backstory, I was like, wait a minute, like, she needs Nico too, like, I've been talking about how much Nico needs a friend, Renee needs a friend, <laughs> like, <laughs> she doesn't have a friend, <laughs> she's like, she's just like Nico, for real, like, she does not have a friend, friend at all, she's probably sapphic, let's be honest, <laughs> in my brain, in my brain she is sapphic okay <laughs> so they are the same they are copy and paste i think he literally turned someone into a ghost and threw him back into the underworld he opened up the earth and put him back into the underworld for renee because that man cut her face and he lost his damn mind and I loved every moment of it. I loved every moment of it. Okay. <laughs> Listen, the found family of Nico and Renee and Coach, honestly, these are my favorite chapters. I don't care. Renee and Nico's chapters are my favorite. 
in this entire book right now. Which is probably like crazy to say because it's like this is the first time we're getting their POVs at all. But oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> They're good things, which is great. <laughs> but it's like the first time I'm really like feeling things in this book specifically. Like, which we're already like more than 50% in at this point. So it was kind of concerning. <laughs> but that also means we're getting to like, we're getting to, to the nitty gritty. You know, there's like two days before what's her face wakes up but also um since i have you on here bro i literally forgot about the spoiler i had of percy having a sister <laughs> and then that goddess whatever her name was i'm sorry i forgot and no one remembers you that was the whole point of you in this chapter but his sister is literally a goddess and it's like oh okay i thought i thought when <laughs> when we were talking about sisters i was thinking like in the sense of like percy and tyson being brothers i was thinking like jason and talia being brother and sister like i was thinking that type of thing was gonna happen where like he finds his half sister who's also a demigod and they like team up and stuff but it's it's just a, a goddess all these gods they whores the only one that's kept their end of the bargain is literally Hades because all of his children were literally born before <laughs> before the freaking pact of them like oh let's not make any more demigods uh, like even Hazel Hazel was born before that pact even happened but she's just somehow here you know so it's like and you know what I think that's why Hades is my is the best of them it's because he at least keeps his promises, okay? And that's... Whatever. Anyways. So, yeah. A little disappointed in what I thought. What everyone meant. Everyone... I saw, like, one clip. <laughs> a long time ago. But what ev what people meant... When I heard she, Percy had a sister, <laughs> it wasn't... My brain didn't think of, like, oh, yeah, he's related to probably like millions of people technically <laughs> theories on who's gonna die <laughs> let's get into it if any of the people that have had a pov basically are gonna die honestly any of them make sense like you could spin it in any way like leo he is he is the like funny best friend side character sidekick whatever so like they're always the type that end up ends up dying so i could see him dying i would be very upset and that's usually why they have that character die. <laughs> I'd be very upset by that. I could see Piper dying because that would just, I know, I don't know, kind of go into the warning that, that Hercules told her, like warned her about being with Jason and stuff and how it would ruin her life. I feel like that means either Piper's gonna die or Jason's gonna die. And Jason could die because he's the, he started the series. And he's like one of the mains and he's like a kid of Zeus. So that would make sense. Piper dying would make sense as almost like a punishment to Jason and then like a punishment to her for being with Jason. Hazel it would make sense because like she's technically not, not even supposed to be here. It would make sense for Frank c considering like his lifeline. Lifeline is literally like a st little stomp. It would make sense for Percy even though I know. Rick would never do that. Rick would not do that, okay? I would be the most shocked if Percy or Annabeth died, okay? I could see it happening, right? But it's not gonna happen. I know he's not gonna do it because I just know everyone would find his house so quickly. <laughs> I think Percy and Annabeth are safe. And that's really it. <laughs> like Renee, it would make sense for her just because of all she's gone through and like everything that Aphrodite keeps saying. Nico, it would make sense because son of Hades and they don't have, and everyone keeps talking about how they don't have good lives. They're never happy and all this. And he's been like restrained. He's been like, oh my God, just giving and giving and giving to the point where he's like on the brink of death every five minutes. <laughs> So it would make sense, but I don't think that's I, if <laughs> if Nico died. I swear to God, I would find Rick's house. <laughs> Any of that, even Coach, like just because that would be so sad. Because his he has a wife and a child. 
waiting for him. So that would be very sad. So that would put, tug on the heartstrings if he died. Like, pretty much anyone is up for grabs. Speaking of Nico, the end of the chapter I just read, the freaking coach got the Pegasus, like the Lord of the Pegasus, Pegasus, Pegasi, whatever. He got them to help bring this damn statue. And I am so excited about it because my baby Nico finally just gets a damn break. Like, <laughs> I am so happy. Okay, Coach really came through. I'm very confused right now. I don't know what's going on. What's happening? What's going on? Because I had, when he, because <laughs> when Leo gave Piper the vial, and in his brain, looked at Hazel and was like, you know what to do? I was like, is he giving Piper a fake vial right now? Why would, how would that make sense? Because we still don't know if Leo or Jason or Percy is going to be the one to die. Like, it would make sense if we knew it was Leo that was going to die. And Leo was like, I don't want to be brought back to life. If we do this, we're going to mess up everything. So this is a fake one, but we don't know because it says storm or fire or not and or. But then in the exact same chapter after I was thinking that it literally confirms that that is exactly what he just did. <laughs> so now I'm over here kind of freaking out because what if it's what if it's Jason or Percy that needs it? What if it's not even Leo? What are we doing? <laughs> what is he thinking right now? I, ju I just want to know. What is... What's the plan? Like, just just include me. Why is it just Hazel and Frank? I want to be involved. <laughs> Put me in there, coach. But also, I do have to say, the more I'm reading, the more I am kind of confused over Percy not having a POV or Annabeth, because this is the last one. So you would think, like, all seven would have their own POV. So I'm kind of confused about that. Rick, you listen here, you bastard. If you do anything to Blackjack, I will find you. Don't you dare hurt any of these Pegasus, Pegasus, whatever. He said no animal death, okay? Human death, I'm okay with. Animal death, no. No. No one's dead, okay? <laughs> Why am I about to cry right now? You may be asking. Oh, the tears have come. Um, literally Renee throwing herself over the explosion to protect the Pegasus. This is why she, this is why I love her. This is why I got so excited when we got her POV because I knew she was that girl. Yeah, Athena's statue protected <laughs> the name. <laughs> why did I call her Renee? I just realized I called her Renee. Her name is Raina, maybe. You guys know I can't read. Don't ask me. <laughs> For today, you have proven yourself a hero of Olympus. <laughs> and that's the title of the series. Ah, I just realized I just made the connection. She's a hero of Olympus. <laughs> I love her. Raina, you are the love of my life. She's always giving other people her strength. She's always there for other people. She's always so helpful. And she's always like helping like lead the pack or whatever you want to call it like she's always like the person to go to for things but like she needs help too sometimes you know and this time she finally got help and not only just any kind of help she got help from her mom and athena's statue to kill a giant and then she said this is for phoebe and she said you will die at the hands of a girl that's right that's right, bestie. Everyone, Blackjack is okay. We're fine. We're cool. We're fine. We're not fine, actually. Um, the Romans just started the, the battle. So that's not good. 
Nico and Will? I honestly didn't see that coming, but I'm here for it. Has it happened? No. Is Nico just letting Will touch him? <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, oh my god, yes! Yes, that is exactly what's happening. I'm into it. I'm also low-key into a possibility of Nico and Jason. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I'd be here for that, too. But Nico and Will. I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> the way I bursted out laughing when Percy said, Oh, come on. I get a little nosebleed and I wake up the entire earth. <laughs> I do miss his POV. I, I, I understand. I understand, guys. <laughs> I understand the the... The anger <laughs> of this book not having Percy's POV. <laughs> you see, Piper's asking the questions everyone wants answers to, damn it. What is the point of being gods if you have to rely on puny mortals to do your bidding? For real, though. Not, not only puny mortals, but puny teenagers. <laughs> like, What? No, because actually, can we talk about how, like, they literally split up to try and stop Gaia from awakening just to have to go back to the camp anyways to defeat her? Like, <laughs> like at this point, it sounds like we should have all just went to camp. Camp Half-Blood. That's what it sounds like to me. Leo's just playing, right? He coming back. He has, it, it's Leo. He coming back. What about him and Calypso? I know, I know I predicted it, but I don't want it. Please. <laughs> Please, I need to see Leo and Calypso. I have a theory. <laughs> I have a theory with like 20 pages left. <laughs> but Nico just mentioned that Lee, he felt Leo's death. Unfortunate. Um, <laughs> but he said it felt different. So, I'm wondering if he, I don't know, it's Leo. I don't put it past him to figure out how to do this. Even though, let's just, I can't even figure out how he would have done it. But, I'm wondering if he figured out a way to, after the explosion, go back to Calypso's island. I'm just throwing that out there. Because if that's the case, I am happy for him. <laughs> Thought I would cry. Um, over Leo's death, but I did not. You would have thought I would, considering I cried literally over, uh, Reyna jumping over a, a explosive arrow. I literally cried over that, but here I am not crying over Leo dying. Maybe because I was expecting it, I'm like numb to the fact that it, it happened. I called it! I told y'all! Well, I don't think that was necessarily leo's plan but i but that did indeed happen he did find calypso i can't believe it ended that way though like i need to know if leo finds them i need to know i need to know if leo finds his friends or if he just like travels the world with calypso like i need to know <laughs> what's the tea is there more i need to know what how do I find out? How do I find out this information? Please let me know right now, okay? But now that it's over, now that it's done, I can definitely say some things. And some of those things are I totally see why people are annoyed that Percy's POV is not in here at all, which you guys know at first before I started, I was okay with. But like looking back on it now, I'm kind of just like the highlights of this book in particular the pov was for me was uh reyna nico and leo that's it and then there's still jason and piper that were in here and i just feel like for the last book everyone's povs should have been in there like, percy and annabeth they felt like they were barely even in this book like sometimes i would forget that they're even there which I feel like is a problem. <laughs> like, I know that it's kind of like the series starts and ends with Jason, in a way, and his crew, I guess. But, like, we also forgot about Jason c completely. 
in all the other books. So it's just like, I don't know if it's if that was kind of the route where it's like Jason was forgotten in the other books. So then Percy's going to get forgotten in the last one. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know. I personally don't think that was a good decision. Definitely do feel like Percy's POV should have been in there. Octavian. He was acting so crazy. I started to wonder if like Gale was like in his head, kind of like how Kronos was in Luke's head. But I guess he that he's just crazy. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like right before his death, I felt a little bit bad for him, but I didn't feel the way I felt when like Luke died. That was upsetting. You know, that was sad. That was tragic. Octavian, it was kind of just like, aw. Sorrows. Sorrows, oh. prayers. All the deaths that did happen in this series felt that way. And I feel like, I feel like I like certain books in this series more than the Percy Jackson series. But I like the Percy Jackson series as a whole more than Heroes of Olympus. House of Hades. Probably one of my favorites, which is interesting because The Battle of the Labyrinth is my favorite from Percy Jackson, and that's also the fourth book. So, yeah, but The set, the Son of Neptune, also one of my favorites. I really enjoyed that one. Mark of Athena, I think I really liked, but it just took me so long to read it that I, I kind of don't really remember <laughs> what happens other than what happens in the end, you know? So... There's that one for a for a final book of the series. It's kind of lackluster. The plot is very high stakes. The Earth herself is about to awaken and destroy everything that we know of for Earth, right? That's a that's that's like the biggest stakes to exist, right? But while reading the book, it didn't feel like it was high stakes you know like i felt like last olympian that felt like higher stakes to me and it's like plot wise side by side obviously heroes of olympus's plot is so much more so much more high stakes compared to percy's plot but it's the emotion it's the, it's the feeling that percy's series gave me that makes me like it more than heroes of olympus so it's all based on vibes <laughs> it's nothing to do with the writing necessarily but vibes alone it's kind of lackluster and maybe if i reread this next year i'll feel differently like maybe it's just me in this stage of life that i'm in maybe i just feel this way now I definitely do think there should have been more death <laughs> still like Phoebe died some a lot of the Amazonians died Leo died but then came back to life or whatever I felt more emotion with Bob in House of Hades when he said to say hello to the stars for me like that like I was looking for that that type of sacrifice that type of emotion that it inflicted on me is what I was wanting in this book but I just didn't get it. even with the deaths that I listed we didn't really get that I don't know why Leo's death didn't hit me as much as I thought it would I don't know if it's because I was expecting it or if it was the way it was written or I just was in denial and just knew there was no way he was dead <laughs> I don't know what it is, okay? I just, I am a bit disappointed is all I do have to say, I guess. That's the end of this video. <laughs> what a way to end this video. Like it's so, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe a month or two from now, I'll feel differently. I, I just want more info on Leo. I want more info on Nico and I want more info on Reyna. But recap, let's go through what I said each book was. The Lost Hero gave a solid four stars. And I do remember that primarily being because of how it ended. <laughs> the Son of Neptune, 4.5 stars. Really enjoyed it. The Mark of Athena, 4.5 stars also. And then The House of Hades, also 4.5 stars. 
And then this one is going to be four. So there's not one that's under four stars. Star ratings seem to repeat themselves. Like they're either a four or they're a 4.5. So it's like he's almost getting me, but not, not fully. I guess I'll say I'll be back on here if I feel differently. Future Nisha here, back again to interrupt. Also with new hair, yet again. So I actually realized while editing part of the video already that I actually changed the first book, The Lost Hero, I changed the rating after like I calmed down from the cliffhanger. I changed it to a three, so it's not a four star. So not every single book in this series has a four or above. After thinking about it a little bit more, I think the Blood of Olympus, the final book. I was just trying to be nice, giving it four stars, I think. I was in denial that I really spent like two, three months of my life reading the series just to be so let down by it, you know? And so after thinking about it a little bit more, I think I would probably give it like a 3.5 star rating. So that's interesting that the first book and the last book both have like the lowest ratings of the series because I think the middle books like the three in the middle are so far superior so I don't really know what happened I am aware that there's a possibility that Jason dies in Trials of Apollo I'm assuming so I'll probably read that series next unless you guys want me to read a different series and you guys want me to take a break from the Rick Rorden universe and like get into Divergent or something like that I can do that too. If Trials of Apollo is good, I'm going to start assuming that Heroes of Olympus, that is kind of like a filler series there to like introduce you to the other characters and that's it, which is kind of upsetting because not only is it five books, but these books are a lot longer than Percy Jackson. Pretty sure The Sea of Monsters was only like 270 pages or something like that while I think almost every single Heroes of Olympus book is 500 plus so that making this series like a filler series to me at least is just not that fun you know but you know the second one and the fourth one are probably my favorite like I've mentioned so yeah I don't know the series is just weird <laughs> I wasn't prepared to feel this way, but at least I really, the books I really liked, I really liked. So, there, at least there's that. But yeah, I just wanted to come on here and clarify for a second. Back to past. Nisha. I'm sorry to all of y'all that have been waiting for this video because, <laughs> because it's clearly not what y'all we're probably expecting. Sorry if I've disappointed you too, guys. <laughs> Definitely comment down below if there's another book I need to read because I need to know some other things about these characters. So definitely let me know down below, okay? I really thought Jason was gonna die. And I still feel like he should have. <laughs> I feel like it should have been Jason. I, should've like, I feel like it should have been Piper. I feel like I feel like it should have been one of those hoes. Like, that's, that's really what I feel like. It should have been one of them. What do I know? I'm not a writer. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Comment down below any other books that I need to read from Rick Warden or whatever's next in his universe for this series of vlogs where I read a popular series from my childhood for the first time. Let me know what else you guys want to see from that. But, yeah, I hope this video was worth the wait. I don't think it was, <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed the video. Anyways, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Meet me on the street line. Meet me where the lights fade out Tell me what it feels like